Bitcoin. A bunch of computer code that a bunch of criminals, idealists, and speculators agree is worth real money. Sadly, its real money value swings widely, making it impractical except for criminals, <laughs> idealists, and speculators. Blockchain. A different bunch of computer code containing an unalterable record of a series of transactions. The most famous is a digital ledger recording all Bitcoin transfers. Those definitions came courtesy of the AARP just a few weeks ago. <laughs> it is no wonder that there is rampant confusion and misunderstanding. I'm going to offer you a different view. I believe that blockchain has the potential to transform commerce the way the internet transformed communication. Now, why do I think that? I've been working in high tech for over two decades. I would tell you the true length of time, but then you'd know how old I am, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I've been part of two startups, one of which went bankrupt. Totally not my fault. <laughs> and I have been part of the rise of major technology trends, including wireless and internet-based communications and the cloud. I understand enough about how technology disrupts industries and gets adopted to be dangerously committed to my beliefs and envision a future that is both exciting and, in my view, likely to happen. That AARP definition did get a few things right. Bitcoin is not blockchain, and blockchain is not Bitcoin. They are, in fact, different bunches of code. And Bitcoin is the most famous use case of blockchain, at least today. But blockchain is where the magic happens. It can simplify the complicated, streamline the convoluted, and create transparency and trust. It can transform commerce. I think back to the emergence of email. I was working at a government agency when we were rolling email out and trying to move away from faxes. We had an administrator, and she, for the life of her, could not understand why we would use email. She thought it was silly and duplicative. I should probably mention um, her job was in large part taking our faxes, copying them, and filing them. <laughs> so she thought email was duplicative, and it was, if you believe that nothing can be improved. If I had dared, I was young, and she was frankly a little scary, so I didn't dare. But if I had dared, I think I would have said to her, yes, faxes work. But this is going to be better. It's going to reduce friction. It's going to be more reliable. And it's ultimately going to simplify what we do. These days, I'm actually having similar conversations with some of my colleagues when we look at test cases using blockchain. They challenge me on my assertion that blockchain will transform commerce. Because when we look at those test cases, it it actually just looks like a streamlined process. Like when you order something from Amazon, you can see exactly where your order is through the process right the way through until it ships to your doorstep. And they're not using blockchain to do that. So my colleagues will ask me, why don't we use a database and some application programming interfaces instead? Won't that work just as well? They're not wrong. My response pretty consistently is, yes, that works. But it won't be as simple. You'll need intermediaries, processes, paper, checkers, likely recheckers, all of which limit efficiency and add costs. Blockchain is giving us a new way of exchanging value and conducting commerce, by no means the only way. And much as the internet fundamentally transformed how we communicate, 
I think blockchain has the potential to fundamentally transform how we exchange value. Why am I so convinced? Because I see similarities between what the internet did and what blockchain can do. It creates simplicity, transparency, speed, and above all, trust. So let's look at what blockchain does and how it does it. When I first started learning about blockchain, I did the usual. I went to presentations, went to webinars, read, I read a lot. And I found myself thoroughly and undoubtedly confused. I would read and reread a definition that goes something along the lines of the following. Blockchain is a distributed ledger database based on a cryptographic peer-to-peer -peer network providing a single source of the truth. Now, if you're anything like me, you understand all, if not most, of those words individually. <laughs> but you put them together and say, that's your definition? Not a clue. I mean, seriously. Is there any wonder that the AARP felt the need to come up with their own definition? <laughs> so let me break it down. Blockchain is a ledger something to track the exchange of value to record transactions. It's a new version of the old paper ledger that was computerized in the 80s and the 90s. But this ledger is special. It resides in multiple places with exactly the same information that is continuously updated. Everybody has access to the same exact information. Isn't this the very definition of transparency? But why would we trust the information that's in the ledger? Why do we believe it? The answer to that question lies literally in the block and the chain. So a block is a record of the transaction. But in order to lay down that block, you need to solve a cryptographic algorithm. Fancy terminology for super hard math problem. So you have to solve the math problem in order to record the transaction. For clarity, the computer does the math. You all don't need to do the math down the road when we won't move to blockchain. So it's the computer. And since we know that there's only one answer to that math problem, I think we learned that in elementary school, the entire system knows it must be a true record of the transaction. Now, subsequent transactions are recorded in exactly the same way. You record a transaction by doing the math problem and laying it down in the block. That's what forms the chain. A block can never be changed. So if a mistake is made, you actually need to do a new transaction recorded in a block to offset it. So you have a record that you know is true. You have a record that can never be changed, and you can all see it. You have trust and transparency. So let's think about how that dynamic works today. When parties who don't trust each other, either because they don't know each other or they've just got no reason to, it's not a bad kind of not trusting each other, it's just the way it is. When they need to transact, they use intermediaries somebody who does have a trusted relationship. It is this trust and transparency that is so huge and so transformative. Because think about it. Think about all the intermediaries that exist because we don't trust and don't have transparency. Attorneys, brokers, bankers. And think about the paper and the processes that move around and get checked and rechecked because we don't trust and don't have transparency. Insurance document, documents, shipping documents, proof of ownership. And think about the cost and the time that's involved. I imagine a world where those intermediaries and those processes are gone or greatly eliminated. 
where friction is reduced and transactions occur as easily as information is exchanged over the internet. But this is not going to be an overnight change. As with the early days of the internet, there are weaknesses. Blockchain is still a new technology. There are hiccups, there are lots of skeptics, and there's no regulatory regime as of yet. And as with that administrator when we were moving to email, blockchain will require a change in processes, behavior, and likely beliefs. So while I don't think it will happen overnight, I do think that we will get there. How do I think it's going to evolve? I think back to when the internet was becoming more widespread. Information was actually still pretty limited, and to a large extent, you had to know where to find it. And in many cases, you need, needed permission to access it. And look at us now. A worldwide web of information that is democratically available and intuitive to access. I think we'll see a similar evolution here. We're already beginning to see the rise of private blockchain networks where the parties in a transaction have permissioned access to the blockchain. Like that major retail giant that is tracking the shipment of produce from its origin to their retail stores using blockchain. These private blockchain networks will become more and more common and easier and more intuitive to use. The information will become richer as the assets change hands and they, and they grow until ultimately we'll have a web of transaction information, maybe even a worldwide web of commerce. So while some think that that bunch of code blockchain is just the enabler for that other bunch of code, Bitcoin and a bubble, I see it as the technology that's going to democratize and revolutionize commerce, freeing up hundreds of billions of dollars in cost and making it easier for all of us to trust and transact. Thank you.